Welcome to Patty's Aquatics. So just recently, I was lucky enough to have Father Fish join me on one of my live streams. And I'll put the link for it up here. Now, we talked about so many different interesting topics and talking points during that live stream. I really felt I wanted to make a series of videos regarding that live stream and show different clips of it so you can maybe better understand Father Fish methods and maybe more understand his thinking and way he does things. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next few videos. It's going to be his food web, the controversial water changes, um, the additives he uses for his soil and why they're beneficial, why you don't need fertilizers in these aquariums. And then for today, what is the father fish method? So stick around and let's hear them out. Can you explain exactly what is the father fish method method now like i said there might be people that don't really know what it is or know vaguely of who you are can you explain sort of what your method is to maybe get people to understand it a little better who may not know well it kind of comes from two directions the one direction is simply my life my childhood and and recapturing the the, the joy and fascination of my childhood. The other, however, is much more uh, formal, I guess. And it, it really grows out of Amano and Wallstead. Um, Merle Cohen, who I mentioned to you, and, um, um, oh God, what is the name? Ge Ge geothermal. Gee, gee, I can't remember. It'll come to me, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, and it's 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 what has come to be called the natural aquarium. Uh, it was really started, I think, formally <clears throat> in um, in the Far East. There was a uh, a man uh, from Malaysia, I believe who was maintaining saltwater fish in natural environments in hotel lobbies with essentially no electricity. And he was doing it by collecting everything from the wild. Merle Cohen found him, got to know him, brought that technology back to the U.S. He by then was... Uh, one of the luminaries in the in in the uh, industry, both in terms of fish and products, so he began promoting that that system. It was picked up by GARF, Ge a Geothermal Research Foundation, as a saltwater system uh, based on building a substrate of what they called miracle mud which was nothing more than a heavily bacterially enriched substrate um, that was the foundation for, for, for their uh, aquatic system. They were growing coral in that system. It was picked up then, the concept was picked up by two people almost simultaneously. That was Amano and Wallstead. Wallstead did the research on it. Um, uh, um, Amano did the promotion on it. Um, and and they, I don't know that they ever worked together, but they were certainly working in tandem. I got involved in uh, about 2005, about five years after their efforts had begun and developed. So I came in later on and wanted to open a shop with that kind of system in place. In doing so, I realized that the, based on Wallstead's research, that there were two major problems with the system that had been designed up to that point. Now, the research was all in place. They knew exactly what was happening, why it was happening. Um, Amanu had made it clear that there was a brilliant future 
for this system. Wallstead had demonstrated the 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 uh, uh, the functionality of it. What they had not done was overcome the problem that that the the soils were leaching into the water column substantially so, and they were depleting, so that they could only they could only maintain a system for about a year, after which it just failed. So I took those two those two uh, uh, issues on, and began looking for ways to number one enrich the substrate, and number two cap the substrate so that it would not uh, leach out into the water column. <clears throat> Developed what has come to be known as our supplement package, which has to date 13 mm -hmm. elements in it, including the most recent, Leonardite, which is a newly mined mineral from an ancient volcano bed <laughs> in Utah, I believe, that contains uranium, natural uranium. Natural uranium is, is a growth element. It, it, it affects the growth of plants you know, in a way that's healthy, not in a way that stays. <laughs> so we've, we've included, we've included the Leonard date now, most recently into our mix. Uh, we've developed a formula for the soil involving a, uh, a lot of humus and soil. So we do we do 50% um, peat moss or some other kind of organic material like choir, even ground up leaves, anything like that, any, any uh, 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 organic material, 50%, that's 50%, 25% soil and it can be a poor soil or a rich soil. Doesn't matter so long as it's a soil. And then 25% compost. The compost brings organics in and brings a lot, a lot of the bacteria into the system. That's the soil to which we add uh, 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 an amount of our supplement that builds the whole mineral foundation to last up to about five years, long enough for the whole system to cycle. Cycling is the issue that no one up to this point has really been able to get a handle on. We've done it by, by, by super saturating the soil, the, the, the substrate with mineral content a broad spectrum of minerals and some biologicals in order to make sure that that soil, which once it's in place, you can't, you can't add to it. Once it's in place, it will not deplete until the system has been able to fully cycle all of its elements back through the, the, the biology of of the aquarium the biology of the system so i call it a system and not an aquarium because it really is a living environment a total environment in which everything is interconnected with everything else and it, it forms a cycle so that when the plant breaks down or the fish dies it breaks down is broken down by all of the little animals and bacteria that break it down, it, it precipitates into the substrate, further breaks down through bacterial processes, is then charged by the hormonal activity of the plants to, to chelate it so that it, it develops the organics needed by the plant in order to take it up again. There's the cycle. And it takes about five years for everything to cycle. Uh, uh, the, the, some of the folks um, on, on the plant channel 
have been very upset with me over the years for using sand as a cap. They said because they they say it's it's too slow. It's too slow. What they're not acknowledging is that nature is slow. Nature takes a long time to go through that process and to build it from the time a plant is living to the time it has died and returned back is a matter of years, not days or weeks or months, literally years. So you need a system that can sustain itself for that length of time in order for it to begin to, uh, to, to, to fully cycle. So there, that's basically the system. Um, I did see a question here from Ron from Garage Aquatics, which I would So once it's cycled, is it essentially permanent? Is what he's asking. So yes and no. It it is permanent. However, <clears throat> there needs to be an a continuing influx of energy. Energy energy dissipates. The energy that dissipates from the tank is not recaptured. Elements are recaptured, but the energy is not. So how do you replace that energy? That's the importance of the resurrection jar. The resurrection jar and the food web bring new material into the tank. We typically, traditionally, have done that by feeding the fish some kind of food, a prepared food, a raw food, a live food, whatever it is. With this system, the food is fallen, dried leaves from trees. That's the food. That is consumed by microfauna and macrofauna, which in immediately become available food sources for small fish. Now, it doesn't feed big fish. Big fish need to be fed by bigger food sources. The best food sources are things like earthworms. That's the absolute best. Uh, scraping or chunks of fish or shrimp, other small fish, insects, anything that would nor normally come into a natural environment as a living organism that would be consumed by these larger predators. <clears throat> that then becomes the energy source that, that, is, that is the gasoline the energy that that allows the system to to continue to function. So yes, you need to add food to it, but you don't do it by adding flake food because all that does is rot. It deteriorates. It is already a deteriorated product. That's what it is. It's a rotted, deteriorated product that has been flash frozen, if you will, at a point uh, in, in its, that, that makes it somewhat stable, but not actually stable. So when you put any kind of prepared food in the tank, you're putting rotted material that within the first few minutes of it being in there is already com is breaking down at a, to, at a greater and greater and greater degree. In other words, it's it's not fresh live material. It has little or no energy in it. It has no life force in it. It's not in any way alive. The leaves that you're putting in there are feeding microorganisms. So the importance of putting microorganisms in the tank is absolutely critical because that's that that's that's the living creatures that are converting these leaves into organic material, into uh, material that can be consumed through, through the cycle, through the chain. 
Well, I hope you enjoy the video. Maybe you better understand what the father fish method exactly is now that you watch that. Um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button, but make sure you hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss the next three parts of this series with father fish. Also, if you're not subscribed to Father Fish's channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss any of his content. And always remember to think outside the box, take a step back in the nature. Hope to see you next time here at Fantasy Aquatics.